Okay, welcome back. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at um, building out an analysis real quick. We're, we went to a real estate business. I put together a, a loan video, which we'll have to highlight here. Let's first look at this. And we put a control page in place where I put a global interest rate in, and I'm going to create a name range. So if you click on the cell, which is B8, go to the name box over here, and I'm going to call this rate. Well, yeah, let's call it rate. And then you hit enter, and now we have rate. So no matter where we are in a spreadsheet, if I hit the down arrow here, basically hit rate, it'll drop me back to rate. So I go back to our loan analysis, where we had the annual rate here, and we just type in rate, it'll be equal rate, really. You see it automatically pulls from that control sheet. And we already did a video where we were able to do this loan sheet, so we won't come back to that in a moment. Uh, maybe we will actually. Let's just do one simple calculation function, just to make this simple. Let's do the payment function, um, PMT function, keep it simple. We'll watch the other one because you're going to need to do everything here. Um, in this case, is the payment function. And the rate is going to be the monthly rate we're doing that. The periods are this. The present value is this. I actually put parameters here. Uh, well, let's just put future value, keep it simple. Is a type one loan, and but watch the other video to understand how it parameterizes and everything else. You see, it shows up a negative sign. It's going to catch outlay, and we're running parallels today, and that's how much the loan costs us per month. So, and then analyze that. Let's just take that and do it simple. This times twelve and fifty-seven thousand a month. In our investment analysis. Here's a loan repayment amount. So and it's doing by year one through year five. So let's go equal um, back to our loan sheet. And we pick up the payment amount because the annual amount so it's not a monthly amount. You gotta be careful, you don't know which one it is. Checkbox. And then a simple, it's gonna be the same unless you're changing a loan in another year. It's gonna be the same numbers, so just equal the period before and drag that over. You see why we made it we flipped that sign from negative? Because we wanted it to basically be, show up on the statement this way. Um, so let's go in and we'll have to calculate these, but that's not in this exercise. Let's build some charts and let's just get a couple. Like these are cluster charts here on the left. Let's just build one. Um, let's take a look at this. Ooh, revenue analysis. So the first one is revenue analysis. Maybe we'll just do a highlight. Well, let's do it. Let's do it properly. First thing we do is we highlight the the categorical variables, which are really important. I'm on parallels. Then we highlight all the revenue factors that we want. And go insert, rec recommended charts is the way to go. Um, uh, this is pretty good. And you can see different five years. There's different ways of doing it. But I think that this was a good, and it put in nice five year buckets and then crossed it. You can actually see the revenue and everything grow by year. So we can do it this way. There's multiple ways to do this. Um, you could pick your chart in that regard. I'm just looking at what's clearest. I think this is very clear how we can do it, or we can do a stack chart. That's what you saw on the right with a stack chart. Um, it's over here. You can drag it to where you want it to go. That's one way of doing it. You place it on 49 and a half in the middle of that cell. Um, Product revenue analysis. Let's see, like that. Okay, good. Now, let's go ahead and create another chart. I'm going to show my shape. I don't want to get into this formatting shape just yet. Um, expense analysis. Ooh. I'm probably disturb. He's looking at some of these charts, but he can't give it away yet. So let's do an expense analysis. We go back up, same thing. We do the multi-criteria, non-adjacent cell selection. Hold the control key down. Highlight all the expenses. And then go insert, recommend charts. I don't like that name Microsoft does. Oh uh, look, they showed me the stack chart this time. I'm just using what they have, okay. And this is expense analysis. This time they break it up into its components. That's why I wanted to do a revenue the first time. 
Let's right click this time and cut. Then we can come down here and paste it right where we want to get it. Eh, nothing is ever easy, huh? Escape, paste, <laughs> and let's move this chart over out of the way. See, it looks a lot more like the one on the right. <laughs> so you can actually do all these things. And let's move this chart over the way. Okay, so those are pretty good. Um, oh, mm, look at these great charts. Oh, I like those dual axis charts. Let's go ahead and create a dual axis chart in that regard. So in this example, we have categorical variables, and then we also have numerous drones, number of service calls. And let's just do an example of figuring out, let's hold the control key, what gross income looks like on this company, or just say net income even, control net income. You see I highlighted these different ranges. So I go insert, wait a minute, charts, I really want to get to all charts. And I want to go to combo charts and pick the fourth one. What do I want to do on one axis? What do I want to do on the second axis? Well, the second axis, I want to put the income line because it looks kind of weird. So this way, I can show you how much money we're losing or not making. And we're dealing with total service calls on the primary axis. And we can pick what we want from it, though. We, can, we don't have to do cluster columns. We can. Um, it's actually good as well to have a line. Let's see on the axis which one we can do here. Yeah, the line can kind of contrast the two. Okay, I guess that's all right, but just know that you could change the type of chart on this car. So we say okay. I'll just cut it and then come down where I want to move it. Right click. It still doesn't like that. I'm going to have to do it differently. Paste it <laughs> like this. Change the title to. I'm just going to change it simple to call it combo. Combo chart. In that regard, we still should format these things and everything else. Let's go through it. Um, Let's do a Pareto chart. I think that would be kind of good. I think if you go over here, we can come in and we can look at factors in buying, public factors and government factors. There's two different sets of factors. So let's just focus on the first one. And let's look what the government does. Let's hold the control key and do non-adjacent cells again. And so we go insert in this case, we're going to pick a different. We're going to actually go to statistical chart, and we're going to look at the Pareto chart over here. Click it in, and the Pareto chart goes in. It creates it automatically, which you actually, if you notice, is a dual access chart as well. It puts everything in descending order. Right click, cut, and we're going to go back to our investment analysis. Over, right click. Yeah, he doesn't like that, does it? Paste. <laughs> and, uh, just title it Factors When Buying. Factors When Buying, okay. So we got that going on. And now we've done that. We picked up a few. You just do a straight line chart. Sure, why not? Keep it simple. Um, go up and Maybe the line chart is just, let's just grab a couple of lines and go insert and change it to the line chart. Maybe one line chart that will cross it, line with markers. I kind of like this. You can play with it. Let's just have fun with it for a second. Put a line out there, what we see. We have two lines and two pieces of information, right? Um, total service calls, number of in-service drones in that regard. So one is certainly not growing as much as the other. Total service calls are growing. The number of drones are not. That's good if your business is expanding. All right, so that's good. Um, we're going to call this drivers. Because really the drivers of your business in that regard. So let's go through that. So is this a double clicking, not too much. I kind of like that. So it's a good line chart. Um, let's go to the chart design menu. 
I like the little curved look, maybe the markers, maybe a little shade, uh, kind of nice. I like that chart style. So when chart style with that, I want to switch columns and rows. Ooh, look at all the years. Doesn't really make sense though. <laughs> but anyway, we got this chart. I like that. Right click, cut. Over here, paste. Let's go up and take a look at year one expenses. Let's just take a look at what we're going to do in revenue in year one. Um, insert pie chart. We get the first standard pie, but maybe we can pick the second pie. And we have this pie chart, which is pretty interesting. And you know, little call out sections that we have here, and we can plot the the chart that's maybe I don't know, like that one this is kind of good kind of like everything above it oh that's pretty good it's got the labels in there this one actually looks the, the nicest I like this with the call out functions and it's got all the different colors and everything so this is kind of nice because they group everything into one bucket and they show you what's in the one bucket it allows you to make the chart and this is revenue analysis year one right this is revenue analysis Good, I like that. I'm going to click it. Now, you know, if you click the chart and you go to chart design, you can actually click move chart, right? Object and expense analysis, and you can move to a new sheet or something else. Object in investment analysis, right? We're, choose where you want the chart to be placed. Well, we want in our loan analysis, and boom, it pops over there. Not really. I like to right click, cut, and come back to loan analysis at the bottom. That's like a surefire way of doing something. And paste. This chart, this call out chart where you split things in two is actually quite useful because you're able to break it into two components and leave the first component all done. So there we did six good charts. We went through it. Um, we've had a lot of fun doing, doing it. Um, I still want to do one more a county chart here if I do a geographic chart and this is really important if we build a chart and maybe I'll do that in the third video let me put it in here in this video the way you do it is you you first pick series one data hold the control key series two data you go insert maps find map and it, it does it just like the chart above. Yeah, I know it's simple enough. Pick it. But one thing I didn't do on this chart that I wanted to come back to do, if you come in and you click different areas, you get this thing here where you have the map series options. Um, you can make this a, say, Mercator chart. And then we can actually go only regions with data, and it zoops into the Florida County where we have labels, show all and you can actually show the labels that's fit only so you can do things like that you can show different labels and whatnot and it shows you the name of the counties here but it doesn't really do it the so best fit only it doesn't really come out in that regard so it's just something we can do we can actually call out one area so it's just something to think about how we can play with things and come back in Data labels, more data options. Yeah, we got that series there. We click through it, we got the series. We know what phase something deploys in. So we know the deployment phases. So maybe there's a good chance of doing both charts where we can do that. So there's a good battery or chart that we can do for this analysis. I hope that this is helpful.